The Harkles Horror Mentory gave us some disturbing clues, including Harry's proposal being caught on camera by Megan herself. But at some point you realize that Mexit was not a spontaneous decision, but instead it was planned years in advance, as you're about to find out. Welcome back, my battle language buddies. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the battle language guy. And yes, taking a picture of Harry proposing was a red flag enough. I mean, who stops to get the phone out to take a picture at this moment? And that's when I began to notice a pattern in some of the pictures that they show in this whole romantic. And the pattern is, who took these spontaneous pictures? Because they want to make it seem like they were, well, totally natural. And this is something that I've pointed out in previous videos. They either have a photographer following them everywhere, and I mean everywhere, or Megan has always has a tripod ready uh, for that loving couple shot. And this goes beyond the simple question, who took this picture or how this picture was taken? Because you have to imagine the whole scenery or the whole scene of what was happening at that moment. They were casually chatting and, well, being together and there was that camera in there to capture the spontaneity. Don't you think that's a bit like prepared? In fact, the more spontaneous the pictures are, the more unsettling is the effect because you realize that, uh, well, they either were dancing and hugging and smiling in front of a cold tripod with a camera or there was someone else in there with them when they want to make it seem like, well, they were alone and happy and whatnot. And this is a pattern that we see over and over again. And you realize that not only was the documentary planned in advance, so they had to take all these pictures somehow to show them, you know, to sell their love story. But also, Mexit was pre-planned at, uh, well, in quite some detail. I mean, there are so many photos of the Harkles that look like an insurance company ad, like this one. Again, who took this picture? They were alone at a hut or a cabin or something. And, well, they set up a tripod and, oh, let's hug and let's take the picture. Uh, well, well, that, that might be it. But I don't know if you have ever heard of a tripod that walks behind people, like trying to keep them into, into the frame. Who was this? Was Doria? Was Archie? I don't know. I think they could sell this as stock footage for insurance companies. But perhaps one of the well most interesting pictures is this one. They are well having tea at a very small house. And thanks to Firefly Sonata, who spotted the last photo to be from the inside of Queen Elizabeth II's playhouse. I'm sure the two didn't ask permission to take or use that picture. That is the dollhouse of Queen Elizabeth, a playhouse from Wales, loved by Rogers. And, uh, well, Beatrice, it was the Queen herself in 2010 that gave her the permission or the responsibility of taking care of the playhouse. And there's the allegedly but not confirmed fact that she gave the Harkles permission to film inside it. And we know that they were filming inside it because we have the pictures of the, well, the Harkles and the teacup and the cups that we see in that picture and we see the official picture of the Royal Collection Trust and the exact same cup that you can see the comparison between both pictures in here. So don't you think it will have been a bit like odd of Megan walking into the playhouse with a tripod or a photographer? It's, uh, well, it's like they are thinking of something, like planning something in advance. And this is food for thought. If they went to such great lengths, to secure content for their horror mentory. What other content they would have secured for, well, the following years? Like a second season of the horror mentory. And there are pictures like this. This must be a photographer. If it's a setup tripod, these people are insane. Wouldn't Harry want to be in, alone with his wife without the pap following them? Uh, you tell me, this, this would be a, a, a real pain to, well, take it themselves. 
And yes, in the horror mentory, they make sure to include the zoom in, so, well, you know that they are in love, and more of this later. And they, no, no, they were absolutely not trying to copy William and Catherine, but I, but I think, I, I thought that it was, well, I was stretching things out, until, well, thanks, Royal Wales, Cambridge Power, it's not necessary that I say anything, you see, well, the, this is William and Catherine with a dog, and yeah, I, I don't have to say anything else either. But well, back to those kissing pictures, and especially kissing selfies. This might sound like an awkward or weird question, but is it common to take selfies while you're kissing your significant other? You have the right to say it's completely normal, only if you have taken this kind of pictures. I, I found them a bit like odd, like uh, you have to hold the camera and close your eyes and kiss like, oh my God, yes, we are kissing and such and such. And I'm sure this is a, a, a selfie because I can see Harry's arm towards the camera. So he is like holding the camera. And some people on Twitter were arguing with me uh, saying that, no, oh, that was, that must have been a photographer. Well, still, it's, it's creepy. Not to mention how stiff is Harry in, in, in that picture. I'm, I'm just going to go forward. I don't want to stress you that much. But uh, yes, there's this arm, Harry's arm, holding the camera. This is also a kissing selfie. I, I don't know what to think about this. But thanks to my good friend Jennifer Barreto Leva, it appears that someone was saving evidence. And well, I agree. But not happy with that, I decided to run a poll on Twitter to, well, find out. Have you ever stopped to take a selfie while you're kissing your significant other? Yes, that's cute. Nine percent. No, what the hell? Ninety percent of uh, people. Well, you get the idea that most people, especially if they are not teenagers, uh, do not do that kind of things. But who am I to judge? I would like to know what you think in the comments of this video. We have enough uh, examples of this, like they want to make sure that they love each other and also that Megan wanted to make sure that she was a natural and a spontaneous girl uh, all the time. And thank you, Sweet and Salty on Twitter, saw this the other day, the crop pig that was made to look like M, Megan, was fixing dinner for William and Catherine, was actually first posted on the TIG in 2014. You remember this picture when she was saying, even when Will and Kate came over, yeah, she was, you know, barefoot, ripped jeans, you know, natural girl, a bit hippie, you know, uh, flower child, yeah, that's, that's, you know, the image that Megan wanted to project but no that picture was first published on the tag in 2014 making fish tacos make of that what you will i, I must say that i sometimes uh, understand when people tell me you are just seeing things you are over analyzing things this is just nonsense but then can, can you explain this picture megan will always get to be in every picture one way or another and what do we see here we see harry uh, that was feeding Archie. I, I blur Archie's face, but uh, well, the first moment that was pointed out this on Twitter was that the plate of food, it should be this one, I guess, is empty. And no, there was no food on the spoon and Archie had his mouth closed. So, well, uh, you have to look for the picture. I'm not going to show it here, but I have a couple questions. The first one who feeds a baby with a dress shirt? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, well, Harry has a thing for being dressed at home. Maybe. You know what's strange? That Harry's always with those uh, polo shirts, like worn a hundred times, washed a uh, hundred times, and it's the same polo shirt. And when you're feeding Archie, you use a dress shirt. <laughs> I don't know. That that is so odd. And at the same time, two two clues in here that well were in the photo by accident. This is this can be an accident. In the same picture, you have number one. Number one is that. Vows print, the vows at their wedding, Megan's vows, you know that is in that calligraphy, 
that she had and it's the same you can see this ornament here is the same as this ornament here and this one is the same as this one is the same and she showed that at the end of the last episode of their horror mentory it's uh this was on purpose you tell me that oh yeah harry was feeding archie and oh this was casually on the background okay near uh, a plant and what is here we have this cover of vogue magazine that was guest edited by her royal highness the duchess of sussex forces for change you know so, so many details in just one picture and yes it's like uh, megan has to be in some way or another there so that that gives us the impression that she carefully picks and selects and chooses and makes sure that the narrative fits whatever she wants and in this case well we know that she prepared that someone that is so controlling is one of the first clues that we have that well she planned this from the start maybe she, even before meeting harry and these are not even my words we already have proof of that in harry's words harry and megan planned maxit before lavish wedding and taxpayer funded 2.4 million pounds makeover the duke of sussex had revealed in the latest episodes of their Netflix show, the lengthy negotiations he had with his father and his grandmother as him and Meghan battled to leave the firm. And this is what he said. By the time I was speaking to my father from Canada, the family and their people knew that we were trying to find a different way of working for a minimum of two years. When you subtract those two years from the moment they were talking to Charles from Canada, you get around january 2018 they had been planning this hybrid royal way of working which they did not consult with the queen at that moment for obvious reasons because they knew they were going to be rejected and now they're trying to paint that like it was a forced decision that it was william who kicked them out of the family and when was Harry who said on uh, the opera interview that Meghan saved him from royal duties, that his father and William are still trapped in the firm. We are talking about two that want to spin the narrative, to, well, change that narrative every, every couple months. And the more they change it, obviously their credibility, if there is any left, plummets so just quickly while we're waiting for jenny to call i just basically just feel like a little bit nauseous there was when they were waiting for the results of their um uh, lawsuit against uh, the mail on sunday and yes i feel a bit nauseous but keep recording keep the camera on yes i, I want you to focus on me crying or almost puking and feeling nauseous we don't want to do a reality show this is a reality show and a very lame one what i find baffling is that so many people believe them without just looking at the facts what they have said themselves the pictures the interviews the everything and they take this documentary at face value after even comparing that to the Oprah interview and you put them side by side and I don't know what kind of mental gymnastics do their fans go through to justify this but it's amusing and sad at the same time. My body language buddies, my name is Jesus Enrique Rosas, I'm the body language guy and remember the two most important words, much love and bliss.